All right, hello everyone. My name is Jake. Happy New Year. It's going to be a great year, 2020. So, this year, what I want to do is start getting into some more complicated uh, electronic stuff. You know, different electronic projects, you know, gear, gadgets, things that move, things that uh, light up, you know, whatever. First thing I should make is going to be something that I can use to make other electronic projects happen. Uh, and that's going to be a spot welder for lithium ion batteries. What it is, it's just a quick pulse of electricity to quickly join a connecting nickel strip to the terminals of the 18650 battery cells. And you want this because uh, just soldering onto the battery terminals will overheat the battery and damage it and give it shorter life and might even explode, which is a very bad thing. So it's good for safety, it's good for the life of the battery, and you can easily make your own battery packs. Let's talk electronics real quick. So this is a transformer out of a microwave oven. And what it does in a microwave is it takes the power out of your wall. Uh, it runs you through this coil, which creates a magnetic field, which then gets picked up by the secondary coil, which transforms the voltage into a uh, very high voltage, which can be used to uh, create things that make your burritos nice and warm. So what I've done so far is I've taken this top coil out and replaced it with a higher gauge wire, just uh, four gauge jumper cable wire with less windings. And what that's gonna do is, instead of making it high voltage and low current, we're gonna go low voltage and high current, which you can use to melt metal. So here's what I have so far. Kind of a mess right now, but here is the high gauge wire with only three windings on it. And I did that by uh, basically cutting that secondary winding and knocking it out removing all of the fine inner wires. It's a very laborsome task. It's very messy, but it needs to be done. Uh, so just, if you're gonna do this yourself, be careful and uh, take it easy. and Don't uh, cut into the iron housing and don't cut the primary lower coil, whatever you do. So after you get done with that, what I did was I took the ends of that wire and I took some copper pipe and made lugs out of them on either side and flatten them onto the wire so it's nice and crimped. And then in the extra space of the crimping, I drilled some holes to screw into the handle here. And then I drilled a bolt, or sorry, I tapped a bolt into there. So on these bolts, I just have some 14 gauge copper wire wound around them. Uh, and these act as the electrodes of the welder. Also, I, onto this, you know, just piece of wood handle, just a piece of pine, I put a little trigger switch, just a little button switch I have the wires for that trigger coming out uh, the sides of the wood handle. And then I fixed everything together with just some plastic clips. So that's the handle coming off the secondary coil. Uh, and this board is sort of the uh, brains behind the whole operation. So this board is essentially a timing relay for the mains power coming through on this end. And on this side, this board requires uh, a small DC voltage. So. I have a 10 volt power supply, so I'm just gonna use this to feed on this end. And then the trigger also goes into this end as well. And then the mains power comes into the back of the transformer. I just have that same wall, the same plug-in cord that I took out of the microwave. So that's essentially how this is gonna work. You have mains power coming on this side of the board. You have a DC uh, power supply to power the board and this little timing module here. All you're doing is basically timing the amount of uh, electricity that comes through this trigger and you weld batteries with it. So I'll provide a link to this board and sort of a small write-up of how this all works again, just uh, in case you're curious if you wanna make this yourself. There are a lot of tutorials on how to make your own battery spot welder. This is just how I did it. There's a lot of ways to do it. So I'm gonna keep going on this project and kind of finish it up and show you along the way how I get it all put together. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is get the wall plug prepared and connected to the uh, wall plug of the 10 volt DC power supply. So these are going to share uh, the connection that goes to the mains outlet. And to do that, I'm going to use a couple of pieces of about 8 inch copper wire. This is 18 gauge, but uh, most anything will work. So I'm going to start by basically just stranding together the wires. 
like that. Make sure we get a piece of heat shrink put on there. Through the hole of the terminal on the DC power supply. And then we're just gonna slide that over. So I'll just heat that up and that will hold everything really nice and tight, making a good connection. It's just making contact. I didn't solder that joint because I didn't want to uh, melt any of this plastic housing. So that's going nowhere. And on the other end, we're going to put a spade connector. This will hook up to the spade post on the transformer. Slide that right on and then just crimp that. That's going nowhere. So we'll do that for this post as well. We have another piece of this wire. Just twist those together. Put heat shrink on it. Perfect. And light it up. Okay, this grounding wire will just ground right to the iron on the transformer. We don't need all of this extra cable coming off of the power supply. So I'm just gonna cut it at about just under a foot, I suppose. And we'll have to trim this back. Okay, so let's wire up the DC side of our timing circuit. So we have to incorporate the trigger mechanism as well. So these wires come off the trigger. And then we also need to use the wires coming off of the DC power supply. So if you look at the wiring diagram of this Board, you'll see that the trigger mechanism is shared on the CH1 and the DC plus posts. So that means we're going to hook up the trigger in line with the positive voltage coming off of the power supply and it's also going to hook into the DC1 terminal. So with our positive red wire, we're going to add one of the trigger wires and then the other trigger wire is going to go to this CH1 post here. So let's go ahead and hook that in. So this is one of the trigger wires, and I'm gonna twist that together with the positive wire coming off the DC supply. I'm gonna loosen this positive post here. So those are fixed together, and they will go in the positive terminal. Okay. And then this negative wire can just go right into the negative. Pushed all the way in and screw that down. Okay. The last thing to do is going to be getting this last trigger wire put into the CH1 post. So now we can wire up the 120 volt side of it or the mains power side. So, so now coming off of the wall plug, uh, this one from the negative is just the spade terminal, so that's going to go right onto the terminal. Uh, the ground can just be screwed onto, that can just go right onto the body of the transformer. And this uh, wire is going to go into the top post. So here, we'll fold him in half actually. He's going to go on the top post. So I have this black wire, it's about eight inches long as well. Uh, cut off and stranded already, and then on the other end I have a, another spade terminal. And that'll hook right into the 120 volt out. So we'll screw that in. And then the spade goes right onto the other spade connector of the transformer. I'm gonna tighten these connectors on transformer just so they're good and snug but that's essentially it so we have again on this end we have DC power coming in to power the whole board and to operate the trigger mechanism so we have trigger on the positive and on the channel one and then DC positive DC negative in the middle and then on this end we have 120 volts coming in and 120 volts coming out so what this is essentially doing is acting like a gateway uh, so this end basically powers and controls the gateway 
and this is what is being held back by the gateway, so called the relay. Uh, so when the relay fires, it'll open up and then it'll let 120 volts through it for forever long I tell it to. That's gonna be enough to power the transformer for that amount of time through the trigger mechanism. So that's basically what's going on here. So here it is turned on. I, I just plugged in the wall outlet and it turned right on, which is good. So to operate this thing, we'll want mode 12. Mode 12 is for timing with the trigger. So every time you push the trigger, it will open the relay for just a certain amount of time. To change the modes and the times, you'll have to go up and down here. I have it set to fire for 0.2 seconds. So every time I push the trigger, it will weld for 0.2 seconds. And then this is for a secondary time. We don't have that. And then we're back at the beginning. So that's essentially how it works. So when I push this trigger, you'll see the lights blink and it'll flash for just a second. Like that. Okay. Okay, so there we have it. I put the DC power supply on top, just stuck it with some double stick tape, and then sort of did some cable management, cleaned up things, so it looks a little better. I might still build the case around this whole thing, I don't know, but that'll be a later date. For now, let's give it a test. But that will have to wait for tomorrow's video. That'll be part two of this video. Hope you enjoyed the creation process of this microwave transformer spot welder thing. It took me a very long time to put all this together. Um, I started the project, you know, about a year ago actually, and I've had parts break and I didn't know what I was doing and it just took a whole lot of time to figure all of this out. So I am extremely pleased to have it done and that it works and that it's safe. And on that note, if you are not comfortable with electricity, with doing electrical projects, uh, especially with high voltage and cutting apart, you know, important, dangerous pieces of electrical equipment, do not attempt this project. Make sure you have proper safety equipment and proper knowledge of what you're doing prior to going into this because you could hurt yourself. So please just be careful. Make sure you have some fun doing it too. Learn something. And that's what this is all about. So I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Make sure you subscribe if you want notifications for when I post the video. Go ahead and click that little bell icon and uh, like this video if you did. Leave a comment if you have questions or if you think I'm a total dummy for trying something like this. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching. First of uh, a lot of new interesting projects coming out soon. So thank you. Bye.